Chris Bowes, I really appreciate you coming on, man. I, I know you've seen the Bilge podcast before, but just a couple yeah. ground rules. Okay. Uh, there are none. Like, all you right. can say whatever you want, and the only thing is we respect all our guests. So sure. if you say, or if Trait, not me, if Trait asks something that's a little uncomfortable and you answer and just say, hey, let's cut that out, Charlie does a good job right. of cutting this thing out. So yeah. No worries. I appreciate sure it'll be you. great. I appreciate you having yeah. us on. Yeah, and I know we're in the out. middle of a tournament right now, and uh, yeah. I didn't make the cut or anything, but you're going to, after this, make your way over the way inside. And, and by the way, what, like, okay, so... After you blast the guys off. Sure. Um, Which he what doesn't did, do that anymore. Uh, okay. Yeah. Right. Well, actually, um, until this week, all the elites I've attended, I've still done the lineup, which I which I did at the Opens. On know, the, the dock every morning. Dock. Yep. Seen you but um, we have a CTA, Chris Gist, who's great. He really, um, he's relatively new for a few years, but he really enjoys doing that. And he yeah. said, do you mind if I do it? I said, hey, I'm, dude, I'm good. I've there done you it go. like 700 times. I'm Plus, fine. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So okay, so when you're uh, when you're a tournament director, a bass tournament director, what does a tournament director's day consist of after blasting off? I mean, do we go home and take an or go to the hotel, take a nap, most people, and then come back at at? Uh, you try to go back to the hotel. You usually go eat. That's eat, you know yeah. priority number yeah. one yeah. after, after yeah. you take off is going to get some food. Yeah. Um, and then you'll go back to the room. You know, a lot of times I, I'd kick up my feet and turn on the news. I really wouldn't sleep because you can't stay you, on call. You, you got to stay you, on yeah, call. Yeah, you, you, you'll get calls. I mean, yeah. if you really go into it thinking, oh, I'm going to take a nap or whatever, it's not going to happen. So I'll kick back and watch the news or you know some some sports uh, uh, highlights or yeah. something like that. Usually. You know, emails, it's hard to keep up with emails. I'm sure you guys experience that sure. as well when you're traveling mm -hmm. and you're competing, you get off the water. Same thing, when you're out in the field, you're doing weigh-ins. We still got a lot of other stuff. I mean, we're communicating with the next venue, yep. uh, even sites for the next year. Like right now, we're heavy into um, starting to set up the 24 schedule. And, and I, I was going to release it here today. Oh, wow. No, no. No, no. <laughs> you got me you there. Wish. You got me you there. Wish. <laughs> no, but we are. We're, we're really, we're in communications. And when I was doing the opens, I, I did all the all the, um, the negotiation with the sites and setting up the schedule. Don't hold that against me, I right. know. But <laughs> right. we have, you know, there's a lot of things that go into that, though. I, you know, you're you're affiliated with Bass Pro now. Mm -hmm. The opens were for years where we had a way in at Bass Pro Shop. Yeah. So that kind of limited your sites you know hank weldon who took my place he's got a little bit more freedom you know because he doesn't have that relationship we still have a strong relationship with bass pro but we're right. not married to to doing the weigh-ins at, at the store so that that opens up a lot more yeah. opportunities so but we're doing those kinds of things just trying to stay up with their day-to-day work answering yeah. emails with uh you know folks within bass so wow. there's a lot going on and then we usually try to get out there at minimum two hours before the weigh-in yep so, you know, uh, I think I told you today, I, you know, I'll try to get out there about one. If On I'm a little site. late, they usually give me a hall pass. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah, sure. A um, couple hours early to set up things, fill up the tanks, and just we have to, by rule, be ready to weigh in an hour before the actual check-in. Right. So really showing up two hours before weigh-in is really an, an hour. hour. An hour, yeah. Yeah. correct. So, correct. So, you and know, anglers exercise that a lot, don't yeah, they? Fish yeah, Fish care-wise and yeah, 100%. whatever emergency, whatever they have, yeah. Yeah, especially, you know, you get to the summer tournaments, smallmouth mm -hmm. tournaments. Uh, you know, if I'm out on St. Lawrence River and I got 26 pounds and, you know, they're starting to, you know, get a little questionable. Yeah. Sometimes you're just better off going yeah. in and, you know, and, yeah. and, you know, sacrificing that hour that you're good chance you're probably not going to upgrade much anyway. Right. So why not uh, in the interest of fish care and saving every pound yeah. that you can, every ounce, right. every pound. That's smart. So um, you actually, what, in 21, uh, you were moved into a, a different position, yeah. but it was a newly created position. What is that and why was it formed? So... <laughs> When Tripp retired, um, they didn't really replace him. They kind of, if you recall, they kind of did like a, a job share, I guess, for mm -hmm. lack of a better mm -hmm. term. Uh, I was running some elite events, and um, Lisa and um, <clears throat> John Stewart came in and did a few, and uh, really didn't directly replace him. And I, I don't know if they were just looking for the right candidate or, or what. And uh, they had actually, you know, kind of asked me to do that. But I really... Um, I wanted to, I thought there was an opportunity to have a broader role that really t touched all of our leagues. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, Lisa Tomich was doing a fantastic job running the events. There yep. was really no reason to directly replace her and, and it, or, you know, or, or team with her. She could, she's certainly, she's, it, yeah. Yeah, she's, she's capable, yeah. she's capable, yeah. very capable. Right. 
And um, we knew Hank was an excellent, Hank Weldon uh, was an, an excellent move up to, to move up and, and start doing the Opens after 12 years of running the college and, and high school programs. It was time for him. And, and to some extent, it was probably time for me to kind of move away from that. You get, you know, you do something for too long, you become, I don't want to say complacent, they maybe but necessarily. But yeah, it gets a little stale or It gets whatever. a little stale yep. and to have new eyes, some fresh energy. Yeah. And then same thing for Hank, doing those college and high school. We've had Glenn Kale out of Florida come in. He's, he's done a fantastic job. And uh, we hired GL Compton to come run the Bass Nation since John Stewart left us yep. for a new venture. So we got, uh, we really got some fantastic players in place right no now. Doubt. I'm really excited about you know, the future and how we are. And, and now I have the opportunity. I really didn't want to dive all into the elite exclusively. I really wanted the, the more, Opens were more de- near and dear. I yep. love yeah. what I always loved about the Opens, 20 years of running them, was to see the passion, the you know, the the, the work ethic, the desire, not that the elites don't have it, but you know, you've seen it. Kind of like and college you certainly sports. Have seen it. Yes. Right. The, I mean, just to see that and to, to really, you felt like when you were doing that, you could be more of a life changer. Right. Yes. You know what I mean? Different vibe. Right. So I really enjoyed that. I didn't want to leave that. And again, I saw an opportunity to have, you know, one individual that touches all of our leagues. And um, so when I kind of approached Chase Anderson with that, philosophy he he thought that was a good idea and and uh, here we are now so you don't see me at all the elites I've, i'm going to five of the of the nine this year i wasn't already at wasn't at seminole or santee and i won't be at sabine or um st Clair. Gotcha. but i'll be at the two new yorks but what i'm doing when i'm not there is i'm going to a bass nation on the potomac river where we're also hosting a pva yep. event which is super exciting to be involved yeah. a lot of people don't know that yeah. we got actually have a partnership with the PVA as well, Very Paralyzed cool. Bass of America. Wow. And we're going to keep our equipment there over the weekend and run a tournament for, wow. for them. So I, I really wanted to be part of that and, 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 cool. and touch that. And I'm going to the college championship, the the high school championship, so basically team championship. You're keeping yeah. your thumb on Dude, everything. You, yeah, you yeah. I mean, you, you could say I'm, you know, shaking hands and kissing babies a little you're bit. You know? yeah. But you are but I, busy. And it also gives me a chance to kind of, um, you know, all those tournament directors and managers are my direct reports. So yeah. I can kind of see, and they're doing a great job. Yeah. I don't feel like I need to be there all the time. But you yeah. at least can. And, we, and make sure, yeah. one of the things I've always prided myself in is consistency from all of our leagues. Mm-hmm. Because when an angler goes from the Opens, from the college to the Opens, or from the Opens to the Elite Series, there's a lot of changes. Um, you know, I always say the Elites, the biggest difference, and I like it this way, from the Opens to the Elites, is there's more fans and more banners, essentially. I want to keep the actual competition from takeoff is all the same. The weigh-in procedures are all the same. Right. So you're taking away those um, you know, keeping all that consistent for the anglers so they don't have to worry about that. They're like, oh, yeah, this takeoff is fine. This yeah. is exactly right. what I did when I sure. qualified. Um, and all they got to do is adjust to the, in, yeah. you know, the the increase in competition, and right. there's th- which is enough. They yeah. don't need to just deal like with other sports. Spot. Right, right. Right. So, so. You, you strum a chord there just a little bit ago when you said life changing. You know, you like being a director for the Opens, life changing. And I don't think I've, I've told this story uh, on air, but back in 2005, as a co angler uh, out there in Clear Lake, one of the Western Opens, you handed me a gift certificate for a 2006 yeah. Triton TR 196 model, single console, blue with white. You handed me, I, I won a tournament as a co angler. You handed me that get that certificate for that boat. And that launched my professional fishing career right there. And just like you said, it was life changing. And that's just that's just I'm just one dude that yeah. has made it, you know, made my way through the ranks. Think of all the hundreds of, of other anglers. He didn't that... have a boat before then. That was his yeah. first yeah. boat. Yeah, yeah, no, it was, it was super cool. And I remember, you know, yeah. we talk, you know, I reference yeah. it once in a while yeah. and. Um, I think Jared Littner won yes. the pro side, yep, yep. and that was last year. The Western it Opens, was, I believe. Oh, Unfortunately, yeah. I mean, we need to figure that out. Yep, that, yep. <laughs> we, we don't want to open that can of worms <laughs> no. probably on, the, on this podcast. But, well, it's uh, been open, and it's been yeah, closed, yeah. and it's been open. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean that was super exciting for me to go out there as well because I'd really not spent a lot of time out in, in California. Because you're originally from New York. Originally yeah, I'm originally from, from yep. upstate yep. New York, yep. central yep. New York, Different. Syracuse, uh, Nida Lake. If, if fans, probably most of the fans are familiar with it. That was like literally. 20 minutes from my house yeah. so was my home lake spent a ton of time on that and on a dog lake a little hidden hidden yeah. gem right there and 
downtown Syracuse. That's a good essentially, one. yeah, oh, it's it's fantastic, and it gets better all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, to get out there and see that, and see the passion of those Western anglers, and, and and meet meet some of those guys. You know, I think I met that was maybe one of the first times I met Ish and a few yep. few others, and and some of those hammers that back were the, out there in two thousand five are still fishing. Jared, still Litton, like it. I said, yeah. obviously he's still a big a big time pro, and uh, yeah, no, that's. That was a great experience, uh, uh, having the opportunity to go out there and, you know, hopefully uh, we can go out there again, it, it, maybe with Elite Series. That, that would yeah. be cool to go back out there. Yeah, I know no we had doubt. it on the agenda. It seems like every time we get it kind of rolling that something direction, happens. something crazy happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you referenced a couple of uh, names there. And and uh, if, if and by the way, if trait takes you too far into the weeds, you could steer out towards, go a, back to, uh, towards a deep, clean yeah. water out over here. But <laughs> you said a couple names there, like Ish Monroe, Jared Lintner, and then like, you know, like the skeets and things yeah. pop in my head because I looked up to those guys yeah. growing up. Yeah. And, you know, and, you know, qualifying in 2012, I believe, on the Elite Series and fishing with those guys, getting to know them and everything. And then, you know, a few years later, 2018, 2019, the main question I wanted to ask you was like, Okay, at the end of 2018, we all remember that. I mean, this is right before the split sure. happened, MLF Bass. And, of course, Bass played their hand just like, just, you know, you know, classic, uh, you know, with, with the highest regard of, of the sport and respect to the sport. Handled yourselves really well. But personally, let's take your badge off for a second. Personally, when half of those anglers decided to leave, more the guys than half. I, more than half. More than half. Yeah, 60. Okay. I think it was 60. 60 yeah. Yeah. yeah, but who's counting? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're not. So let's oh, take yeah. your back. So yeah, I probably yeah. tip my hat right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So you want but, me to name but, them? No, no. Yeah. I'm, I'm only kidding. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. But no. to remove your badge personally, like, what were you thinking? Like, at the end of 18, so, like, we didn't know what was going to happen. But so, personally, on a personal level, Christopher Bowes, what were you thinking? So there was a lot of. Let's just first not talk about the anglers. We'll talk Cook. about the company. Of course. And there was a lot of chicken little, probably for lack of a better ter- term. People running around. Sky is falling. The sky is falling. Um, we're done. Yep. I think there's some people that left the company because they really thought. There were. They were scared. There were. They, they, they were scared. I was more of the mindset that this is a shield that is 50 something years old. Yep. Um, it has 500,000 fans. Mm-hmm. Um, and growing quickly. Yeah, and and I just really said, I think we're bigger the brand than is. any angler. Mm-hmm. And I thought we had a awesome you know, core group of anglers that stayed, thank you mm-hmm. and, and, and many others mm-hmm. too. And I knew from my experience at the Opens that we had a lot of stars in the making oh, right yeah. there. Mm-hmm. And and I also knew that some of those people that left quite and I Needed and they're outstanding. They that <laughs> maybe I'll I'll, say it. Oh, <laughs> that trait said that not me. <laughs> yeah. But I also knew that some of those anglers that left that were it seemed to be a blow. Three years ago, nobody knew who they were. Mm-hmm. We had just built their brand. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So if we had just built their brands. Why couldn't we build other brands? New ones. Exactly. And I think it's really just come full circle, yeah. and, and and I think it's there. Yeah. And and to your point, um, I don't want to say they didn't they needed to leave necessarily. They needed a fresh start somewhere. Right. Else. They were As well. they were they, unhappy. Right. It was good for them probably yep. too. Yep. They they needed they they were too um, scarred and, uh-huh. and maybe bitter to to really make it work. Mm-hmm. So it. It, it was kind of refreshing in yeah. a way, you yeah. know, and certainly on, I don't want to think everyone that even myself was like hundred percent, this is going to work, but I wasn't like scared. Yeah. Right. Same. Right. right. Yeah. I, that's a uh, one thing that I felt too, just stepping back was a lot of the people who left their complaints and their issues with bass, us younger people didn't experience those. Yeah. So it yeah. wasn't there. They were on two different a yeah. couple ownership changes during right. their time. Right. Their experiences weren't yeah. ours, so we didn't quite identify, you know, when they would complain in meetings and stuff. It didn't resonate with, with Yeah, us. no, I, I I agree with that. I think I think sometimes when someone is with an organization too long or which is their boss, if they have their boss for too right. long, they it's just hard for them to get past Certainly. everything. Yeah. yeah. They they just 
they become a little bit resentful or whatever. And right. I, don't, I don't think it's exclusive to bass anglers. I mean, I think it probably Everywhere. happens at the factory making every industry right. and right. all of that. And, and people just need to move on and, and make changes and, and good for them. I mean, right. I hope all of them are happy and, right. you know, some thought they were happy and now they're happier because they're back here. Yeah. Um, but, and, uh, you know, that's, that's yeah. life. I yeah. mean, that's all, all, exactly. all business, not, not just exclusively bass. You fishing. mentioned that at the top of the podcast, starting out that, Hey, you know, your turn director uh position you said hey look you know let's shake things up and and create a new yeah. position and and keep things fresh and that's a good example of it and then you said you talked about the shield you know that's that shield that's been around yeah. for years and years and years and that's when i was you know ooh, this this invite sounds good you know and all my buddies are going over here this invite sounds great when she sat me down she says yeah she said she, you know she studies warren buffett and yeah. and and you know his uh investments and things and and uh what did you tell me i said it think about it like coca-cola no matter who owns coca-cola people are still gonna buy it because it's the brand bigger than the owner that's right yep and that's no, what i kept I, I reminding him think of Bassmaster as being the coca-cola and fishing she, and to yeah. be honest she told me she threatened said she'd leave me if i did I, i'm dead serious <laughs> she I'm dead, beat, she, you. Yeah. beat you yeah no i said I sometimes said, when it's too good to be true yeah, it, it, it was more for me of a, um, I was trying to plan a plan B, you know, if my husband made that choice and my plan B would have been the only place I knew I could go was FLW and I didn't want to go to FLW, but I still wanted to fish. Um, but I was more concerned with I, him working for, man, I don't, I don't want to, we've moved on from it. So I, I don't like going back to it, but I was concerned that, uh, it would put a lot of strain on our relationship because of who his bosses yeah. would end up no, being. I like I, I yeah. saw the red flags there. Sure. And um, and even though it was scary, we were scared to death because we didn't know he made his decision. And, you know, you think you know, but you never yeah. know how it's going to play out. Um, but God. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of people and smart people in the industry that, you know, kind of wrote you a yeah they, kind yeah. Of, oh, they you did. know yeah. started etching our tombstone yeah. i think I a little bit some... anyway and and i and i just i really personally i knew that wasn't right. happening there's just no way with a brand like that, that that's so strong especially because you know when you go to the classics all these people show up and they do these autograph lines most of them don't even know yeah. the anglers yeah. they're yeah. getting autographs no. from yeah. mm -hmm. and that's and it takes a lot of dropping your ego to see that yeah and uh you know i feel like that's what it there had to that had to happen for us to really see what was going on so yeah yeah no i think it was good really for everyone i think it it helped our company realize how strong it was yeah. mm -hmm. but it also it 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 does kind of temper you a little bit to not be complacent and understand right. that you know you can't take the athletes for granted you can't yeah. take the fans sure. for granted Anyone. you have to keep we all offering them yeah. you know yeah. more and more and more mm -hmm. and i think too it allowed um one of the biggest concerns back then was it was so hard for these guys chris had been around for years five six years at that point but it was hard to get a decent sponsorship endemically uh, for some of the younger guys because the pie was sucked up by yeah. all those vets and when they left it actually opened up sure. a pie for the Lee Livesey's and the yep. chris saldanes and stuff to actually have legitimate endemic sponsorships yeah, because I think, you know, these companies, the endemic sponsors, they spend, they have a, a budget for each league now. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, and yep. so, um, you know, you, in theory, you can, you know, more people can actually get a little bit of piece of, right. that, a yep. of that pie. Yep. Oh. Yep. But uh, let's get it's past a crazy all the, game. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's yeah, get yeah. past yeah. the split. But but let's. I'll end it with good for them. I hope yes. everyone's happy yeah, yeah. and everyone's making a living. I feel like I we've mean, all we're, we're fishing. You know, right. we're making we're a living off of fishing. Exactly. Of catching I mean, a that's fish. Not, Absolutely. I mean, if you told me when I was in high school yeah. you're going to make a living off of fishing, yeah. I would have been sign me up. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah. So yeah, you're you're completely it, right, you're right about yeah. that. It's literally a. a an outdoor activity become a sport where you could actually make money and that cool. we, we should yeah. all no, no matter if you're red or blue or whatever it is like you should be happy about that 100 yeah. percent. so is that was that your big question no no not at all because i got some questions oh boy here we uh, go all right <laughs> so all right. i love questions <laughs> so here's one thing so there are a lot of anglers that always 
I, I know you're not going to be surprised by this, but they like do not like you because you're like the role enforcer, right? <laughs> so yeah, I'm really, and I'm from the Northeast, which makes <laughs> so, me double mean. Yes. It makes me double mean. Yeah. Right? Uh, well, your sense of humor is like, I mean, I feel like you know, I was telling it's Char- awesome. I was telling Charles like some of the stuff he would say when I was on stage. Like I'd get off stage and I'd be like, wait, I think he just made fun of the fact I can't catch fish. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite is my it favorite. It can be a little dry. <laughs> yeah, my favorite is what? <laughs> <laughs> so um, we've had like, I feel like this year has been like uber dramatic in the just DQs yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, and that, I guess, you know, you're in that position, the top of the tournament uh, thing or do you ultimately come down with those decisions? Are no, you, no, 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 how does no, that not work? at all. I'm just a part of the, the conversation. process. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm usually, if it's anything major, if it's not, you know, if it's okay, so and so, you know, went through an awake area, they're going to sit for 15 minutes. I mean, I'm not a lot of times in, involved in that, but some of the things that have happened um, this year, specifically in probably the Bassmaster Open, mm-hmm. as much as anything. Um, I certainly have been in on the conversations mm-hmm. and my my kind of thoughts are are, are asked and, and you know I try to guide more of uh, course of team. action though yeah. not not like decisions but well, course well, of course what, what panel? people don't realize is we very rarely as a tournament group at, are in a are in a bubble or in a vacuum we're we're always um, talking to each other and we have to because we have to be consistent as a league. Um, you know, across all the various platforms. So we'll, you know, especially, you know, when my boss, Trip was involved, he had years and years more of experience than Seen I did. Sure. Yeah. So you always want to see what kind of precedent. Precedent, it's it's sort of like court, really, right? right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So precedent is kind of important, you know, so you want to see if you're heading down the right line or because the last thing you want to do is find out that 10 years ago, the same situation happened and they got a slap on the wrist and you're disqualifying. Them. Right, you know right, I mean? right, right, right. So you want to try to, so a lot of times we'll just consult each other to see, you know, have you had this? In what have past. you done in the past? Right, and right. try to remain fair. consistent and fair. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, none of our tournament directors and managers really just are the be all, end all on major decisions at least. On some of the minor stuff, certainly sure. they have the freedom to, to so I'm a big NASCAR fan, right? Um, and um, once a week, like after the race, like Tuesday, Wednesday, they come out with a report and say this guy was DQ'd, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And then they state like, you know, the the role yeah. that goes with it. Well, for this year, there's been some DQs that don't make sense. So yeah. they've all of a sudden, like this is within like the last week and a half, they now show the part or the whatever. Like, okay, so there's no speculation. So why i feel like y'all's statements this year have been pretty like they say the rule but they're pretty like vague vague. yeah yeah so in 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 this social media world right like people just runs with it so whether it's going after the organization or the angler that got dq'd like it goes from this small thing and then all of a sudden these people are like satan like well why are y'all so vague in those so we are a league so we we really we're not here to make color commentary on a, on right. a ruling necessarily. So we're yeah. just here to say the rule that was broken and, mm-hmm. and what the results were. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're really not here to justify it one way or the other. Mm-hmm. Um, could we do a better job? I'm not disagreeing. I've heard you. I've heard you talk about this before, yeah. and, and I and, and I've kind of it's raised my um, eyebrows a little bit to say you know we do probably need to look at doing a better job. To be honest, mm-hmm. um, I think there's some resistance from a legal standpoint, legal standpoint legal, sure. that you get and, and and I was specifically told you know does it look if we do stuff like that does it look like we're um publicly scolding someone right because I, line. I've, I've kind of like, I've kinda like yeah. you I've kind of thought about do we need to you know we have a Thursday update you know right. you, yep. you all know yep. it and, and I know all the leads and we do them for the opens as well um the fans probably a lot of the fans don't know that no we do. it's we an do email it. it's, a Thursday. It every, it's an email every, that all the anglers get and it's got yeah. information that may be tournament related it may be rule leases, polygraph results polygraph yep. results and and i've I, i've started some conversations and i don't want to commit to it sure of yeah, whether yeah. if we have violations um that we actually put them as Throw part them out of there. that that thursday update so right. that's that's 
sort of happening right now right. to see if it's it, if it can be done sure but um, as an angler i would say if that happened i, I would be more apprehensive to commit a infraction right. i really would because yeah. just the would sheer feel, embarrassment the sheer embarrassment alone right. of seeing chris zaldane dq'd for or failed polygraph for right. x and x yeah, and, I, yeah. and, I, and I, in, amongst my peers that is probably mm -hmm. more pressure than and that's you kind of calling been my me thought. or texting me, you know. Yeah, me and that, too. Yeah, and that's kind of my thought, but that's also probably why they maybe don't want to do it because it is a bit of a shaming, I guess, is yeah. what is, yeah. I think the word yeah. that was. But, the, yeah. but, is, but they do it in NASCAR all the time, yeah. and there's always that. In NASCAR, the, the vibe is, outside of some of the fans who are like, oh, they're cheaters, but yeah. the vibe is like you're always pushing that envelope, mm -hmm. right? You want to get as close to it to get that competitive <laughs> advantage without breaking it. So... When do we start to look at it that way? Now, don't get me wrong. There's some stuff that's straight up blatantly cheating, mm -hmm. right? right? And that stuff you should be popped for and should be shamed for. Yeah. yeah. But most, we, we'll all agree, I think, here that most rules violations are not intentional right. or not to get right. any oh, kind of course. competitive right. yeah. advantage. What is the number, it, but, in your opinion, over the last couple of, or last, as long as you've 20 years, what is the, the, the rule most broken in tournament fishing? Ooh, the rule... I would say probably some type of a no wake situation, no wake, whether it yeah. be bridges or yeah. or, or or others. You and know, and the no guy that's fit, the guy that's fishing sees this the other competitor yeah. run it, and yeah. then he calls yeah. you or texts you yeah. on the water. Yeah, or and, while you're or, watching or, Sports or, Center, or Chris, or oh, I shouldn't say Chris, yeah, or do, Angler X yeah. will say to Angler. Why? Yeah. I just hey. saw you do that. You might want to make a phone call. Yeah, put so your right. That happens. So then that it's happens. quote unquote self reporting. Yeah, but yeah, is yeah. it self reporting if no. Angler X says <laughs> yeah. you might want to make that call? Me. I mean, that's could, interesting. You can interesting. you can go either way. Yeah. I mean, I, I hey, I do. I want to say I do think that most the vast majority of the anglers are honest yeah. and I think they would, I don't want to make it sound like I think everyone's running around there running the wake zones and would do so, right. you know, if they didn't think somebody else saw them. Yeah. Um, but I think sometimes it is probably a little bit of pressure from the, uh, from another angler to sure. say, Hey, you need to make that call. Yeah. Um, you know, I like to hope that call would come anyway, but you, you never, you never know. Uh, as your time as a tournament director, did it ever feel like you were babysitting? Like like babysitting a come That's on a bad question, no, no, I'm <laughs> uh, so, sometimes yes yeah. I would I would not be honest if I yeah. didn't say I mean sometimes because some of those calls um, have got to be yeah, ridiculous and, and, right and some stuff that you just think is super obvious um, and I really don't want to name any specifics because people yeah. will probably know exactly <laughs> who I'm talking about. <laughs> But, I mean, we're not parents. We can't hold your hand right. through right. every step of a tournament process, uh, especially when you get to be an elite angler. You certainly, I mean, obviously, as you come through the league from the high school level, you know, we're going to be more, um, you know, holding your hand, I guess, a little bit more through the process when you're in high school and right. college. You know, by the time you're at the opens level. You don't want to micromanage. Right, we assume that you're an Should adult. It. You know, I mean, even though some of those open anglers are only you know, 16, 17, 18 years old, they're competing as pro anglers yeah. in, right. in, in, in a pro event. I mean, yeah. they're, they're adults. I don't want your mom or dad to Getting call, involved. call me. Right. Does that happen? Oh, I heck guess. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Heck I, yeah. So, I just... so when a mom or dad calls, usually we'll say, you know, we deal with the, with the angler. Even if they're, we you know, even if the they're adult. only 16, 17, 18 years old, um, because you know they're they, we we're dealing with the athlete. We're yeah. not dealing with the athletes, yeah. mom and dad, or, yeah, or whatever. Wow. I, I think that's great that you you call them athletes. One, but um, I just I total respect you, Lisa. Any other tournament director out there? Matter of fact, uh, just because we all know, like if you're sitting here watching this and you're a tournament angler. Uh, you know, do you have an ego? You absolutely do. I have an ego. He hasn't. She has an ego. He's got an ego. They've all, look, look. We're putting our fish on a scale that we caught that day, trying to prove that they're the you know the heaviest fish you know uh, of the day or whatever it is. We all have egos, and for a tournament director to deal with hundreds yeah. of egos each and every day with family problems, with money problems, with fishing problems, all these different problems, you know, and you guys are at the top kind of managing all that. that that's a lot. It really, really is. But but to your point, I mean, I, just about every, I think every professional athlete that's, you know, even mildly successful has an ego. If you, you have don't, to if you're going to compete. Right, Doctor. if you don't, you're going to. Yeah. Because we're all get, looking for that right. number one spot every and, single and, time. And you've seen the draft pick 
you know, whether it be NFL, NBA, whatever, that you could sense almost when they were drafted, they didn't really have an ego. Yeah. And then about three years later, yeah. you're wondering where they went and they're out of the league. You yep. know what I mean? They just yep. couldn't, right. you know, at that point you had, you know, when you're competing against the best of the best, which I believe you are, you, you have to have a, a swagger, a confidence mm-hmm. level yep. um, that comes and, and with confidence and swagger comes a little bit of an ego. Yep. I mean, that's just right. a fact. Yep. So yep. Um, we try to, we try to um, manage those um, those egos, and, and and sometimes we we work with them and, and try to understand them. That's the one thing I feel like that has made me the most successful at my job over 20 years is really trying to really having a good idea of reading a person. Yeah, you do a great Re- job re- of that. On reading stage. how I can yeah. how I can connect with them. Yep. Uh, if they're you know if. A lot of times with the opens, they're not really comfortable talking, um, you know, so I can kind of judge that and yeah. kind of lead Play them down a path. Yeah, yeah. And then yep. some people are awesome yeah. and you just let them roll. I mean, they're right. just natural at yep. it. So um, just always have been. I mean, uh, I feel kind of a people person or able to kind of read personalities. Sure. I'm not perfect. Did you take public um, speaking courses at all in, in, so in school? So... I did one college course in public speaking, um, and I did really well in it. And it kind of surprised me because I I really didn't you know profess myself as a big get out there and, sure. and speak right. a lot a lot. But uh, I was was told that I have like kind of a radio voice. And, yeah, and, a little bit. You know, I have that deep voice. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, I like to think I'm somewhat funny. Um, and you're quick. Can be. I mean, I'm not a comedian. I'm, I'm no, not Dave yeah. Mercer. I'm yeah. not trying to yeah, be yeah. that. Right. But I can at least witty. have a you're conversation. Yeah, and, yeah. and, you know, if I can get a laugh every now and then and, and entertain people slightly. When I when I first started, I, w- I was a tournament director. That's all I was. We had MCs. We had Lurch. I don't know if you remember oh, yeah. Lurch yeah, back in the Lurch. day. And, and, um, <clears throat> and uh, of course, um, uh, Keith Allen uh, yep. came to, to events, too. And... Um, I was approached by my bosses at ESPN at the time, and they were, <laughs> hindsight, probably getting ready to sell us. So they're <laughs> like, we need to streamline some things, and we want you to cut two CTAs out of your workforce. Um, and, uh, you know, I was like, no. I said, uh, these guys th- these guys and girls are working way too hard. They're, they're starting at like 5 in the morning. They're working until like 7, 8 at night. And I said, they're... they're working literally you know to the bones on on their fingertips and uh i said and, and i told lurch this lurch and i are good friends still i said because he was the main opens mc i said i can't i said lurch i'm sorry i can't justify paying your salary to come in and talk for three hours a day your your rental car your flight yeah, yeah. and all that i said i can easily pay for these two ctas and i yeah. said i'm going to recommend to the company that we get rid of the MC at the opens, and I and wow. I'm just gonna do it. Step in, yeah. And I'm yeah. just gonna do it, and that way I could keep the, that same. The heavy lifting. Yep, yep. And, yeah, and that's so. I don't know. That was probably like 15, 17 years ago or something wow. like that. So you're, the takeaway from that, you're telling me that all your employees have to get paid. They don't work for free. <laughs> yeah. Like all the way and all the staff at the way So and, we ha- we do lean. They heavy don't work at, for free. No, they don't. Imagine that oh. we we actually have to pay people. That must how many, be why we pay much, entry fees. Right. That makes sense. How that ma- makes so much sense. <laughs> how many people does the tournament staff have uh, at the actual event? Okay, so it varies slightly, but it's it's pretty consistent. Uh, Bass Nation events, we have two full time people and four CTAs. Yep. Uh, we have six Vehicles. people. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, at 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 the elites, which is our our most, Bread and, and this is tournament staff yep. now. Where you're going with this? This isn't counting, you know, the, media the ten side, writers, production. the the ten camera guys. This is all just the production. The I'm staff. talking about just pure tournament operations. That much of this, right? Yeah. Um, at the elites, we have um, usually myself, Lisa, and a and a full time admin person. So three full timers and um, five, four, four uh, contract contract workers there as well. No, five, I think actually. So four or five, depending on the event. Um, so in those, in those, we're lucky um, to have those folks. They're the the contract workers that you see. Um, they are mostly retired people because yeah. you can't make a living. I mean, it's part time. It's 
Um, most of them work anywhere from 10 to 20 weeks a, a year. So, and you do no benefits. It's a day rate. They make like 150 to 200 bucks a day. Wow. wow. So that, that wow. that's it. That's, mm-hmm. you know, they got to buy their food and everything. We do obviously get their hotels and, and whatnot. Sure. So um, they're, they're really, in most cases, they're pretty big fans and, and, you know, do some competitive fishing or Just have, love to be have there. been, you sure. know, like little time, to- like club tournaments yeah. and stuff like that. But there's a few that they don't even fish at all. Never wow. have, no. They just like being around people. They're retired. They don't want to just sit at home and, yeah. and do nothing. It sure. gives them a little added income to buy, you know, hobby stuff and yeah. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So they're they're a great group. We got about 13, I think, right now that rotate in and out. So it's it, it's it's fun to be around them. It's It's one of the best parts of traveling around is getting that kind of road family i call it and that yeah. right. that's not just the staff i mean yeah. that's even the anglers yeah, yeah. Staff. sure i mean we're I'm, all family it's crazy like yeah. right yeah. now there's like this baby boom it must be there covid is. there or are lots i think there we, are. i think the anglers had too much time at yeah. Home. yeah covid because i was they're... standing in the bump tank the other day i'm just like look at all these yeah. strollers man oh they're gosh, everywhere it's like crazy yeah. man there's yeah. like babies yeah. everywhere yeah. and that's i've seen that a little bit maybe like 10 years ago or so there was like this little bit of a but that i don't think i've ever seen it to the extent it is yeah now. i'm gonna call it's it covid insane. i don't know <laughs> something we gotta get in that game <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, i was gonna stay say stay away from the water there <laughs> yeah. okay. I, am. I, I ran from <laughs> it but <laughs> doing these podcasts yeah, yeah. Uh, so i want to awesome. i want to kick it back to the hard stuff sure s- to the i like the stuff. hard stuff good stuff. so um what can you say about what went down uh the first kind of craziness so can you talk about that on the bassmaster side or like legally you should probably stay away like the whole eufaula incident yeah like, i mean that was really crazy i mean i don't I, I mean i don't know if we'll ever really know for certain uh other than what we know and what we've seen and you know it's one of one of the crazy things about today versus when i started 20 years ago is almost everybody's running one of them the camera. Uh-huh. things right uh-huh. there so you know you video should, doesn't yeah. lie you should always assume that there's a camera yeah on. yeah and i mean in a perfect world we'd have every angler ever out there with 17 cameras on their boat yeah. and then mm-hmm. we could probably never have yeah. any issues at all yeah um but you know it, we're really not in a position at this point maybe maybe down the road to to do that obviously you all have to have um, cameras and, and and fortunately like in this case the open guys several yeah. of them were running cameras that were involved in this so yeah. it, it really gives you it takes away a lot of the he said, she said that right. I'm used to getting back yep. in the day. Yep. So. How, how many cameras were on? So we know of the, the person who... There were several different cameras. I'll just yeah. leave it at that. Yeah. From wow. Several different anglers. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. um, you know, it, it could really put together... <clears throat> It could really piece together the story pretty pretty well, right? Yeah. Just know, like cop work, it's like almost yeah, it's just like cop yeah. work. Like there's your evidence so, right there. And and I'll be honest, probably in that case, and and maybe some others without video, I'm not so sure much happens, yeah. right? Because I just don't think there's enough there. Too there. much he said, there's just, she said. There's just not enough there there. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember. <laughs> There, uh, there was one incident uh, right in front of a, a lock one time, right before GoPros came out, and I was the GoPro. I watched this thing happen firsthand. But there, the, the famous uh, poche ish incident, yeah. like that, when the guys got in a literal yeah. fight on yeah. the water, they ended up in the water. Like I witnessed see, that. See, and I, you know, up. that's a perfect case of like a he said, she said. Obviously, yeah. they both had different. Yeah. And no opinions cameras, yeah. and here's how where we sorted that out i actually went back and looked at that as case, a president case uh, yeah. just recently with some other stuff we've been doing up and kind of looking back and i i because i couldn't remember how you know you get, you get old i couldn't remember what the end result was yeah. actually and and we did end up uh disqualifying both for unsportsmanlike yep. uh yeah, conduct because we couldn't really totally put the blame on on one or the other and i don't know you saw it firsthand do you agree with with that assessment uh without telling the viewers exactly what happened you should tell the viewers what happened (laughs) oh man uh just google it you guys just google it it was poche and ish in front of a lock uh post just you know the short of it is poche came in hot like hot hot and then there's dozens of anglers waiting for a lock to open Okay. Yeah, and there was a big north wind going yes. on, on yes. there. Yeah. I think that was probably that was the excuse. Uh, His saving excuse. Grace. Yeah. That was kind of the yeah. excuse, but he came in way hot and completely t-boned ish. 
And they've had a couple little run-ins in the past, and that was like the straw oh, that yeah. just snapped. Like just Chris, snapped. I remember Chris telling me because I was in that tournament too. But Chris said you heard the fiberglass. Yeah. Oh, you like, smelled the fiberglass. Yeah. You could smell it. Mm, yeah. Fiberglass cracked, and and uh, you know they got into it. Uh, Poche called the cops, uh, sheriff's department. Bass yeah. got involved, obviously, and and yeah. uh, Ish ended up in the in the tank. That and I picked him up. Matter of fact, yeah. that that afternoon, that evening, and and uh, yeah. So it, th- I mean, that's a good example of like the if tempers, the, ca- the, the tempers. If the, the egos, cameras it, were rolling, right. though, it would have made oh, your job gold. much. Yeah, I mean, we could have probably seen more of of exactly what happened, what happened and, yeah. and, yeah. and, and instead of tough, relying on tough to navigate. You yeah, know. and and then. Um, you know, you try, one of the things, you know, we have co-angers most, most times. Back then we had co-angers in every boat. And so you, you, you interview those anglers and, and hopefully they shed a little bit more light. But, you know, they've also bonded with their pro. Right, yeah. so, they, yeah. so they're biased. They've got a skewed. It's a so little skewed. It's a little skewed, yep. Yep. yeah. I mean, yep. I don't want to throw them under the bus that they're lying necessarily, but they've got, you know. They're on their pro side. He, sure. The pro's been telling them what happened, and, yeah. you know, all of a sudden in their head, oh, yep. yeah, that is no, what that's happened. True. Even they're though, biased without even that's realizing exa- it. Exactly. That's I'm true. not saying it's intentional or that right. they're bad people or, or trying to mislead us. I think they just, Naturally. anytime, yeah. I, mean, I mean, virtually... There's very few times that you can't spend time in a boat with someone that, in in most cases, shares the passion you do of right. fishing, and not develop some kind of a, a bond with that individual. Sure. So they're developing that bond. They're sitting there in the morning waiting for takeoff, at, you know, finding out about each other's families and stuff like that. So you're always naturally human find psychology. Their little, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to have a buddy, Mike Cassano, up in New York, great guy, and uh, he was actually cl- the club president when I started bass fishing, and 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 I was a tournament director. And he, uh, when he was he when he was a co-anger, he he went a time without a boat. He's a really good pro, pro you know, boater in, in clubs. And he went a little while without a without a boat, and he did a co-anger. He said this, he used to have a, a thing called um, partner management, and he'd bring his pro like a, a lunch and everything <laughs> wow. Sucking up to and he yeah he'd give it to him first thing in the morning so he and he'd say proper. here's a hundred dollars for gas i know so like how does a guy not treat him exactly. like great he's super so he, smart yeah exactly. he, he called it partner management yeah. 101 and, That's he, smart. and he would like because you can't i mean the guy hands you a lunch and a hundred dollars first thing in the morning. you can't back boat him yeah. and stuff like that you're gonna be like man i've got my limit there's the juice exactly. right there have at it that's smart. funny. That's absolutely yeah. smart. So one of the hot topics right now, obviously, is Poche just got DQ'd. Yeah. yeah. Um, so before I go into that, I kind of want to throw it back to the Red River situation. He yeah. won it, everything. But there was a lot of, like, talk amongst a bunch of anglers. Um, was there, because I noticed when Chris got his new rule book, usually they point out, like, you guys point out the newly new rules, yeah. added there was something about winching in. Yeah, so yeah. what was so, there actually winching in in the Red River Open? Can you talk on that? And before yeah, you... I think I can. I mean, I, I think there was. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, there there was. I mean, that I don't. I think that's pretty clear. I think even uh, Keith will admit to that. There was no rule against that. So, right. um, what the, is winching in exactly? Uh, you would actually use a winch, uh, a, a mechanical winch yeah. to pull your boat in. So in the Red River, it was legal. He was his boat was in the water, uh-huh. so he was not on dry land. Yeah, he was with he was in water that uh-huh. obviously was too shallow and too narrow. Just to power to, through to just power through. I think I think by the time he had winched through a few times, he maybe could, but don't quote me on right. that. Right, kind of dug got, a I think spot it got, out. I think by day, the final day, he didn't even have to use a winch. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you know, we looked at the. The rules after that and said you know this is not something we really want and i think we you know in addition to winches come alongs and all any kind of anything mechanical device that helps you that would help you and and that's how rules are they're they're almost ever you don't changing. think about they're never it. set yeah. you, ne- you never say these are the rules right. we'll never change them again yeah. you know because as a competitor so, you're looking for every, that advantage and technology is evolving right too. true um technology will involve co- competitors will as as the stakes get mm-hmm. higher. Competitors will will look for ways to um, press the rules. I sure. mean, and and to credit to the credit of some of the best anglers, they have been ones that have done that. Right. They, they've they pressed think. the rules. They, yeah. they just like they, NASCAR. Right. And 
and they're all often the most informed about the rules. They're they're yeah. you know they know exactly looking, what they yeah. can do because they're trying to find that competitive advantage that doesn't um, break the rules. So they're going to go right up to the edge. Now every once in a while we will find cases where they they go over the edge. Or then we'll find cases like in this where they went to the edge and we're like, we're not sure that's where we want the edge to be. We need, right. to, we need to, to redo some Yeah, things. so and so that's what's going on right now. That's Everyone's talking about, okay, did, was that impoundment? That, I, I'm very familiar with that area because I fished there during that open, uh, the Toledo Bend open. I was obviously not going over that, but that, yeah. I don't know if you remember, I was making a long run then. Yeah. And uh, so I know the area, it's called the Rollers. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, it does have rollers on it. Too. So yeah. what was the? You can see them on there. Can you talk about the president? You know that that case right now. Or is it still I hot? I think it's still it's pretty pending. hot. Yeah. So I don't think I really want to talk too much we, about it. I'm a we actually invited him to come on. No, you should. He should yeah. too. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we did. Uh, I, you know, personally, I Keith, I like Keith. Okay, I, I mean, think he's, he's good. I have no issues yeah. with him. He. Like I said, there's there's other anglers, and, and I don't even probably have to name them. You can probably think in your own head that mm -hmm. have, are always pushing the limits. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and they're high on Bass Fan, mm -hmm. Angler of the mm -hmm. Year list, mm -hmm. and things like that. Yep. So they're great anglers, and they're doing. If, if you're not trying to find every competitive advantage within the rules, right. you're not doing your job. Yep. But honestly. eventually you're yep. going to get popped. But probably. sometimes, yeah. sometimes you think. You outsmart yourself. Yeah, guess, right. Your head keeps time. hitting the ceiling. All of a sudden, right. your head pops. When all loose, he, yeah. I think about is why just didn't he call you guys and ask like, hey? But you maybe know what I he will was. Say? Usually, those guys that push the rules, those uh -huh. anglers, I shouldn't say guys, but you know what I mean. Right. The, the, fo the anglers that push the envelope, they are some of the most inquisitive of mm -hmm. calling you right. and mm -hmm. making sure everything mm -hmm. is yeah. is okay. Mm -hmm. And that's usually to me when I start seeing that in an angler, I'm like, I know. They're, you know, they're doing everything they can to win. Yeah, it's they a chess don't, game. It's they a don't want to cheat. That's a part of the chess yeah. game. Like right, you're moving right. your pieces to, you know, for the hundred percent. Right. And we, and that's, you know, a lot of times anglers in general will apologize. Like I, I hate to bother you. You know, I, I don't need you calling me on a Sunday morning to ask me when the off limit starts for an event that's ten weeks off. Yeah. But if you know you're starting practice tomorrow and you yeah. want to make sure that you're and you want to call me on it a Sunday morning, it keeps your headaches down too. Yeah, and it's right, and that's my job. Yeah. Quite yeah. Honestly, I'm never. It, when you're a tournament director, kind of like pro angler, probably with the sponsorships and things like that, you're never off. You're not. You're you're always always on, on right. call. Yeah. Because yep. that's just your job. So I then, mean, um, I do have a question then about the Red River incident with him. When he was on social media, was that okay with you guys? Remember when he was like, there's rocks in the way, and he like tuned in live? Like, how did that work? You're talking about during the event? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know how. We're not supposed to. Yeah, I don't know how. Uh, I'm not going to, you know, that was Hank Wells. That was outside event. of your, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I don't, I'm not going to comment how he yeah. briefed. I would um, advise, when I did briefings, I would advise anglers to not go on social media unless, with the, one exception, if they were going to send something to uh, Bassmaster.com. Yeah, that's what you would tell us at yeah, the meeting. Yeah, yeah because you know, for example, and but I never disqualified someone for doing that. I don't think I had a case that was quite like to that level. Right. But like the guy, you know, we'd get the guy running down the lake on Facebook oh, Live, yeah. being like, "Dude, yeah, the seventy, yeah, you know, yeah, and it's yeah, like yeah. looking super dangerous, like yeah, you know, yeah, like right. he's like looking right. this, you know, <laughs> right. seven boats right. all around, right, 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 around him when I'm, he's I, on your clock, you know, I mean, right? I'd be yeah, like, that's, dude, man, I told you not to be on social media, yeah. Yeah. and then not only are you, but you're kind of being unsafe when yes. you're running yeah. down right. the lake doing right. a selfie, right. uh, Facebook, yeah, live if, interview, and there's all boats running. Oh around. yeah, if there's an accident, it's your butt, and that's not you got to think about that guy with the you know selfie. That's not cool yeah right yeah. so you know I'd, I'd crack on some people um but you know we, we we want the content so if a guy you know honestly had key sent to that to bassmaster.com <laughs> that would probably, 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 probably right. flew. it would go viral <laughs> yeah. right so so we want the content yeah. i mean it's always a bit of a balance because uh you, we don't you know we have an spe specifically in an open you have you know 225 boats out there we don't have 225 camera people to put out there we right. could we would not be able to you know pay any payouts yeah. if we did that yeah. right so you know we kind of rely on the angler to provide some content to uh 
to bring to the fans and, 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 and make it a little bit more engaging to the fans. So right. it's a bit of a balance. Uh, again, I'm not going to talk specifically about that because I don't know you how Hank there, feel, yeah. feel. There's no rule necessarily that says you can't do that, but my, mine was more of a, a, a briefing um, that I'd, I'd ask vendors not, to, not yeah. to do that. But, you know, in that case, you know, I will say I don't know the specifics of what happened there, but I can see where Keith was a little frustrated with that too. I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, sometimes – um, you just look at situations. You kind of where's the mind of the individual? Mm -hmm. Were they sure. were they just frustrated and you know not trying to gain an advantage? Yeah, or anything. he was just really venting a little bit, and that was his. Again, I probably in my case probably wouldn't encouraged it, but if I had been running that tournament, had had I said all what I said, I probably wouldn't have disqualified him for that. I probably would have just said, sure. "Dude, that wasn't cool." Yeah, should have sent it to Bassmaster. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my god, no, I'm just kidding. That's, it, well, it's, See, that's it's just like in NASCAR, you know, like they don't want you to fight, but then the fight gets replayed for uh, the next five yeah. years. Yeah. yeah, the internet just lights on fire every time that. No, that again, you know, I like yeah. Keith. He's a good guy. You know, yeah. I don't. I think he's got a family. You know, he's, oh, yeah. he's a he's a good he's a good angler. He's shown that. Yep. He won a major event this yep. year. He yep. cashes checks fairly regularly. He's carved out a career. Yep in this industry and uh he's got some good sponsors um behind him yep. so pushes in good for him for sure. he's making a living yeah, he's yeah. one of the few yeah you know when you look at the, all the people that bass fish and try to make a living bass fishing you know um he's one of the few that's that's been successful or is it successful let me today. ask you this in your opinion you've weighed in a lot of fish and seen a lot of different pros how many guys do you think is making a decent living at bass fishing so if you're going to say like Clearing, let's say six digits. Okay. Would you say that's fair? That's yeah. very fair. Yeah, that's yeah, perfect. For in in this days, yeah, yeah. 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 So six how many digits. in your opinion? Total, all leagues or just our leagues? And and I know you don't talk with the sponsors, like no, the, just, I mean, your I opinion, just your opinion, just your opinion, just by what you see well, and how they. So act. on the elites, on, on the elites, on the elites, I think a third ish. Oh, probably. I don't even think that. I mm -hmm. think it's less. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think about a third. Yeah. yeah. Any yeah. opens guys you think's clearing a hundred thousand? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, we know there's one. Some. Yeah. <laughs> one. <laughs> we know there's some. Yeah. That was great, wasn't it? Yeah, great to yeah, see him yeah. win yeah. that. I <laughs> love that. That was huge, man. Dude, I, I just uh, and I know your tournament department, but y'all have got to get the cameras in the opens, man. Y'all have got. To, and so I know y'all tried. We're working really hard. We're working really, really, really hard to get more live coverage. Yeah. And, and really, Fox has just been such an awesome partner. I That's mean, great. Think about, I mean, COVID, so much bad stuff from COVID, mm -hmm. right? right? I mean, mm -hmm. so much. Mm -hmm. But for our sport, so much good stuff. Great. I agree. You know, from the selling a product inflated. to new, sure. yeah, new, new eyeballs on, you know, participating, new folks mm -hmm. participating, new eyeballs on us as a league because, you know, they didn't have any soccer games to go to right. and all that for a while. And, and then, you know, for it to basically coincide with um, live coverage, just really, and, and our ability to expand that. I mean, that from when I started 20 years ago to now, you know, what I always said is we used to watch the award ceremony. We used to watch the you're an NASCAR person. Yeah. Would you go watch the burnout? Which oh, is basically, I would. Just yeah. the just the burnout. That's it. You know that you just go into the stadium, you watch the burnout. No, that's what I want to see how we get to that point. That's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I watch yeah. it all. You yeah. want to see the race, yeah. And yeah. you couldn't see the race yeah. as a fan, really, yeah. unless yeah. you had a boat true. to right. go out there. True. I mean, I was thinking today, I was I was kind of going over, you know, because I didn't know how far we'd go down, you know, when I started and all that. I, my first my first classic was two thousand four when Takahiro won. Yeah. And Aaron one. finished second. Yeah, Aaron, on the bridge. I mean, what a great guy. I mean yeah, yeah. I know, you know, the, he he's to me he's one of the greatest guys in the sport. And when I first started that first classic, he was throwing that little road run it wasn't road running. Yeah, horse he had the yeah, horse he had thing. With yeah. a little underspin and nobody was really doing that at the time. He was down there. And I remember Coming across that bridge at Lake Wiley, because the takeoff was actually on the South Carolina side, not the North Carolina. Huh. So he had a, and there was just like literally, I remember that. hundreds. Of I remember boats, that hundreds, and I was like, I. That's when I was like, oh my gosh, I've really made it into this big sport mm -hmm. now because awesome. I'm up northeast, you know, right. I mean, you it was not that. that yeah. big, right? 
way and, uh, different up there. It, yeah. And I remember talking to Aaron in, in, in the boatyard and him just talking about this and going through every detail, the line he was using. He was just, catch, I mean, he was right there at takeoff, catching them all around those bridge pilings and just picking them off one by one. And I uh, had this huge flotilla out there, you know, watch, watching them. And, of course, one of the great things about live, for you guys especially, is everybody can watch it on live. Oh, so yeah. you don't yeah, really I get those. Yeah. You get... You get little flotillas, right. but compared to the old days before we had live, you'd have oh, like literally a hundred boats on yeah. one guy. Van Almost Dan, a nuisance too. hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. And dangerous. Yes. And dangerous yeah. to some Changes extent. Changes your strategy. Yes. And so I, but I remember Kevin. Aaron, Poor Kevin in those days. Yeah, yeah. Aaron was the first one, one that would actually. He would sit there and he would he'd get a group of people and he'd tell you everything about that bait, exactly what he was doing, what yeah. he was why. Because he knew he could catch, he you could go do that same thing, and you wouldn't and catch he, what he's catching. He could yep. still catch yeah. it. Yep. That's the same it's vibe. A, he that's a sign has, of yeah. a yeah, sign of a good angle. Yeah. Like that confidence. Yeah. yeah, he didn't he didn't want to yeah. like hold anything back. He'd give you every day, cool. and he was always like that. He was always super honest. He was always super friendly. You know, despite his success, which can sometimes go to your head and make you a little bit right. stand And you're just talking yeah. about a human being, like off the water. Like he was the best human being like yeah. in our sport, period. No, 100 percent. Yeah. So uh, I often think about that class and those float, huge flotillas and kind of back to, you know, going full circle, you know, now with live and live kind of dovetailing with COVID and getting all that Fox needing Fox needing content, essentially. Yeah. They need yeah. content. They Just like have, everyone. You know, you everyone can only watch it. so much cornhole, I guess. Yeah. You know what I mean? And <laughs> yeah. they're like, and so professional true. bowling. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, now, and now they're asking for more. So wow. it's not, so even though COVID is kind of behind us, sticking ball sports are, yeah. are back uh, up and running. They still want they still the want opens, content. right? And they, yeah. yeah, and they want more opens. But we got to, as a league, you know, it cost us a lot of money. Yeah. Like, you know, gotta we talked earlier. Good. 10 camera guys even let's say you do six okay yeah you know six camera guys the production team yeah you know mike mcginnis and those super talented folks that yeah. we have this is JM. a whole production they company. barely get that, yeah yep. i mean they're doing a saltwater series event this yep. week they're doing the bassmaster elite here they have a saltwater event sport and say yeah. yes yeah, sport fishing you've probably seen it on yeah. cbs um they've got that going on and they've got a steel timber sports event up in uh, virginia beach that little company and they're li they're little, little they're like in yeah. little rock yeah. Yeah, yeah they're running all those events so you know from a manpower standpoint there's some limitations we're working through it we're trying to find ways we we want it it's just you know do you have the means just yeah. like everything else you yeah. know? right just because you want it you can't just have it yeah. you got you yeah. gotta have you gotta be fiscally responsible um, you got to be responsible to your people to yep. make sure, sure yep. you're not you're not abusing them. Yep. Right. So, but I get I'm a hundred percent. I mean, right. I'd love to yeah. have. I think it'd be great. I mean, you know, kind of circling back to Ben Milliken. I mean, I can't imagine Milliken being on right. live on a Saturday right. and, yeah. Yeah. and how our ratings would have probably went through the yeah. roof. They people are, love to see those stories, though. Mm -hmm. You know the. Because they can identify more with an opens angler versus the, the pros, oh, yeah. you know, like yeah. they root for those guys yeah. more yeah. because they feel like that could be me. And it also would help, and this is, I think, is huge and maybe and maybe overlooked, is it will help us, and it's good because we do get those last three events, help us build the angler's brand yeah. so that when they qualify for the elites, they got a they got a resume. They got a yeah. they got right. something. They got, they got right. not they got, nothing. It's not some nothing. It's something. Right. right. And they right. can say, yeah, you can catch. You, you know, I made three top tens yeah. last year. Yep. And I they was know. On yep. Fox, and know. they know that they can talk. They yeah. they already well, have a yeah. visual of what yeah. sort of angler they are. You yeah. know. No, it'd be way more fair to them than to have them qual. Like I said, I'm glad we have the three last events because that because you're you know not too many years ago we didn't have any last. None. Yeah. So now it got qualifies. You know, in October, and it's like, okay, He's we got need, a month. Yeah, we yeah. need uh, a ten thousand yes. dollar deposit. In September, in like October, two yeah. weeks yes. sometimes yes. for those. And during the holidays, at yeah. That. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that's you get, a whole nother. You'll have brutal. to explain to the kids yeah. how no presents this year. Exactly. You, know, you got to make a, a deposit on an elite series yep. birth with no sponsors, yep. and no no anything. Brutal. So well, it, we, a story. When we first got married, within like a week of us being married, I think we were on our honeymoon. We had to pay Bass fourteen grand between him and me. Yeah. Like I remember being in Bermuda, and what little money we got at our wedding went to pay you yeah. guys. So oh we yeah, were like, we were back that? to wow. broke. We were like, here yeah. we go. Wow. <laughs> Which brings up another question. I always ask our guests, and I know you're not a, a pro angler, but you're around them a lot. Uh, do you have kids? You got kids? Yeah, 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 yeah. two. Well, How old? Kids. My, that, right. my, 
I have a 30 year old and yeah. a 26 year old. If okay, you can so if the so. 20, it may, both male or male. Yeah, both boys. Yeah. Thank God. So, <laughs> what, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> what's what's the younger one's name? Noah. Noah. Yeah. If uh, if Noah comes up to you and says, "Dad, Dad, I love what you know. I love seeing all these pros, and you know, I want to become an elite series angler. I don't know what his fishing skill is. Let's just say he's a good. Noah's fisherman. really good. Yeah. Noah. Okay. My, my older son. He could. He probably couldn't even cast a spinner. Okay, rod. there you he go. Could. So that's how my brother. He could. Like, we're all. We're he all could, the, but it yeah. wouldn't be very. It wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. be, it wouldn't look good. So if know. Noah's, Noah says, Noah's "Dad," really good. or even ten years ago, or Noah whatever, may be a better at angler 17, than me. Seventeen, eighteen yeah. years old, Dad. Uh, you know, I, I think I'm gonna want to be an elite series fisherman. I want to be a professional bass fisherman. What do you say? Do you support him or do you, do you give him the warnings? Do you give him the 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 no, the nod? So you want the honest truth? Honest truth. He wouldn't ask that because he knows the answer. Because he's seen you. Yeah, he knows. Yeah. He knows what it takes yep. to do. And I don't. He's a great angler. He he's a school teacher now. Yeah, yeah. Um, he lives up. He lives on the shores of Lake Champlain. So yeah, yeah. that's where he oh, fishes. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So uh, he has the good fortune until this year. He just bought a house like mm -hmm. two days ago, Thursday. Oh, nice! Congratulations. That's so great. I'm gonna. So I told him Thursday. I said, so. Um, every day, you know, all the years prior to this day, we're going to call the fishing years because they're behind you right now because yeah. <laughs> you have a house. Yeah. Responsibility. Right. So he yeah. laughed, but he's a school teacher, so he has the summer off, so he can basically go every day on Lake yeah. Champlain. He has a small little 16-foot boat, a yeah. little 30-horse, I mean, a typical you know, 20 something, you know, not, I don't know where these kids, speaking of that, these How kids, they get these college like kids, to, what the heck, man? Dude, wow. And that's why, and that's why I asked that. I've asked Rick Klung, we what asked Matt heck? Heron, we yeah. asked several guests, yeah. you know, would you recommend yeah. professional so, bass So I think he knows yeah. that he, there's like, you know, everybody wants to be a pro fisherman, but yep. you really don't. Here it no. comes. You really yeah, listen, don't. Listen yeah. here, you're, that's you're, it. You really don't. You yeah. think you do? You think you do, but I, I challenge you to go do it for one year, yep. yeah. and I bet you about 99.9% yep. .9 of the people that thought they wanted to be a pro yep. will say, you know what? Yeah. I thought that was way cooler than it was. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Even with those words and Matt Heron's words and Rick Clun's words, we still will have dozens and dozens and yeah. hundreds of guys knocking, just not just want just Dude, I, wanting that. I hit. was that person. I was in the open Absolutely. forever, taking yeah. taking yep. the beatings, yep. giving up my money. It's but so hard, and you wouldn't probably change it change that for the I world. I wouldn't change it, but I'll say it, it 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 definitely sucked the fun out of fishing for me. Yeah. And I had no, to come no, to that can, yeah. like like I don't love can, this it, anymore. Yeah, it can it can. If it gets too taxing like that, yeah. it, yep. could, it can burn you out. And and if you don't if you don't want to not make the cut and go out that next day and go fishing, you're not going to make it. No, no. there's zero I mean, percent chance. Right? No. Zero percent. And you have to, you know, come here to Lay Lake and and struggle and, yeah. and weigh in two fish. Yeah. And then you know go down the road next week for your next event that you yeah. know is another yeah. summer event yep. on a coosa river or yep. whatever the hits keep and coming gonna, and it's gonna be yep. you know can i even get five bites a day yeah. you know everyone i think they see it on tv and they're like man i want to go out there look how easy it yeah. is you, can't, you know I, I we were joking this morning we were watching live and i'm like isn't it amazing how every time someone gets a camera on them they catch a fish yeah it's been crazy <laughs> the, the, the motivation the yeah. Yeah. so you well you think that you know when they edit that oh, because yeah. you know that yeah, they, yeah. that yeah. but you think oh yeah. my gosh it's that easy oh, yeah, like yeah. the camera shows up you catch a no. fish no, yeah. they know that fish no it's being like, caught a minute of before they, like the, they it's know like the nice golf shot right, right? so yeah. it's kind of got this you don't see you know when you're watching on fox you don't see that chris yeah, Day, yep, one of the greatest in the world just went all day, seven hours without a bite without a dang yeah, bite yeah, yeah. You know? but when zona and tommy <laughs> say oh I'm back to zaldane and what's he working on oh there's a bite yeah you don't you're like, you don't oh, recognize awesome. that. yes yeah. exactly yeah. Yeah. so it's uh it's not i mean don't get me wrong if you if, if you have that passion but you really need to look inside yourself and say i'm all in man and yeah. i and and you got to be that individual that, you know, they can't hold you back from going fishing yeah. every day. Yeah. And like myself, I love fishing. Um, but I knew that I didn't. I mean, I like dabbling around with club derbies, one, two day club derbies yeah. here and there. And I had some success, su some success in upstate New York at a, you know, club level winning, you know, 100, 500 bucks, you know, whatever. Right. Um, and it was fun. But I knew I didn't have to go yeah. out there and grind for, you know, seven days in a row and then get in a truck and drive 12 hours and then grind for seven more days in a right. row. I knew I didn't have that yeah. and I wasn't going to. So I said, you know, you have to look at other ways to make, make yeah. a living. And, and you here have. I am. You have. Yeah. So somehow, 
I've managed to carve out some little niche That's, in the industry. So I got a question. You've been around the opens That's a lot. That's your cutoff. You get one more because I'm looking. It's it's a it's ten to oh, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been going. Yeah, yeah. I'm no, sorry, you're good. Man. You're good. Yeah. No, I'm, yeah, this is really my last question. Okay. So whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um. So you've been around the opens a lot. Who do you have? Like, can you name like three guys or girls? But it'll probably be guys <laughs> who you cannot believe they haven't qualified for the elites, but you know they've got it. Oh. <sighs> I mean, give me boy, two, that, not three, putting, two. I would say that's two. putting yeah. me on the spot a yeah. little bit. I mean, I would have, I, I definitely think Sam George. That's my number. Yeah, I know, one. I know yeah. he's your bud and all yeah. that. But I'm it's not true. saying, yeah, it's I'm not true. just saying that because yeah. I know he is, but he's 100% true. Yeah. And I mean, um, you know, there's a lot of people that are around this industry that would, would say the same thing. Yeah. That yeah. Know he's Sammy come so close. He's so many times, you know. Gleason probably was on that list, yep. but then he, he cracked it. He yeah. cracked the code. Josh yeah. Douglas was probably on Those that. Those are all list. good ones. And, Those are all. And great. he he kind of cracked, or he did crack the code. So, um, golly, I'm trying to think. This is this is really hard. There's several Japanese uh, anglers um, too that. Yeah. Dabbled. Um, yeah, boy, boy, Sammy's just the. Who's the uh, one? Isn't there one from the Northeast where you're from? What's the uh, starts with the G? Maybe. No. Mm -hmm. Sam's the one that I'm always like, yeah, oh, hasn't Sam's he done it? Yeah, definitely in there. Yet? I mean, I'm sure, I feel bad because uh, I'm sure there's probably maybe four yeah. or five that if I just had the list in front of me, I'd be like, oh, They'd yeah, stick guy, out, that yeah. Guy, that guy, Anyone that out of Florida? Um, I feel like there might be someone out of Florida. Someone out of Florida. No, not that no. I can think of. Well, the good thing no. is. I mean, I hate to, I, I try, yeah. with also the, I try to stay a little bit. You know, non-biased. Yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, sure. but but definitely, I guarantee you, if I saw the list in front of me right now, I'd be like, oh yeah. Yeah, that wasn't a fair like question. Dads. The good thing is with the EQs, you're starting to see it's it's a it really is a platform that you've provided for the up up and coming angler yeah, we're, to we're show excited. himself. Yeah. And I'm sure if you if you asked him that same question later this year, yeah, he would pick someone out of the EQs hands down and say, yeah. hey, you're look, this is I the mean, next guy. We were looking at the EQ list right How now. How strong that and, couple of five are. Yeah. And the and the youth. In there mm -hmm. too. Yeah, I think eight of the top fourteen have ha have ha either some college or high school uh, experience. So I do us, have so. another question based on that yeah. college, um, dude. You were just talking about how, gosh, they got these fancy boats and all yeah. this, and yeah, it seems crazy. like the sponsors are really like putting a lot into the college side. Uh, and I'll say this, I know because I have a lot of close friends in the open still, and I was there. There's a little bit of an animosity there between some of these college guys coming in. Do you? Is the college playground, do you feel like it's a little bit of the Wild West, or, or do you think that the... Uh, because you're, we're seeing, you know, in the opens, you know, you've, the recent oh, DQs, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. Do you no, think? I mean, I don't really think so. I mean, I think definitely um, this sport, to, to, to start to dabble in it at the college level, you have to have some sort of a backing, and generally yep. that's mom and dad. Mom and dad, and, right. And mom yeah. and dad are probably... Sure. fairly well connected just in the like their education because sure. they're sure. successful sure. Right, right. and all yep. that yep so and they're in in like i told, told you earlier about mom and dad getting involved <laughs> yeah. you know competitors so they want to you know like like you will when if you're ever parents you want to see your kids succeed totally. so you're so you're gonna like try to do everything you Line can with, sure. within the law i guess to, yeah. to uh guides to guide, you know, to, <laughs> yeah. well to make them successful yeah. i guess yeah. so and that's that, I mean, I'm guessing that that happens in gymnastics and, sure, every and, sport. and basketball. Yeah. I know you were a big basketball yeah. player back in the day. And, you know, with AAU circuits and yeah. parents are playing a ton. I mean, getting when trainers. I, when I was yeah, a kid, the Honey we, Boo Boo Beach I played beauty a lot of pageants. basketball too. Oh, yeah. And we didn't have AAU circuits that traveled all around the country right. and stuff like they do now. I mean, right. it's crazy. Yeah. It's its own what world. They do. Everything's yeah, competitive yeah. So, now, man. So, yeah. So, I mean, I, I get it. I don't know. Wow, Wow West might be. A little bit strong, yeah. you know, but no uh, <laughs> but I guess I guess yeah, people are trying to compete at the highest level, and they're they're going to do everything they can within reason to yeah. be successful. That's and, awesome. And that's again probably true of a lot of yeah. sports outside of basketball. Sure, that's awesome. That level, so. Very cool. Well, Chris, as we're kind of wrapping up here, I, again, I want to thank you because you you brought a really cool energy on the set of the Builds podcast. Yeah. You really have. Well, I appreciate and, you having and me. And all on, the man. anglers, I, yeah, they they uh, they've got nothing to worry about when around you. Like, like she said at the top of the show, 
uh, they're kind of they don't like you or whatever because you're kind of an authority figure coming yeah. like a cop. People yeah. don't like cops because oh, I don't want to get Dude, busted. I've or whatever. People should like cops. Yeah, though. I, I know, don't know exactly. I've, Thank you. I've, I've never gotten, really had a terrible experience with. I've yeah. gotten honest, the Crispos I, calls. Yeah, where my heart. Have, you and I both I've had have. to sit we in have. front of him and explain Absolutely. myself. Absolutely, yeah. and and he does it. But I think I'm reasonable. You're fair. You are. You are. As long as, especially if there's evidence that's that supports. Yeah. That's. Yeah. I try to be yeah. sort of diplomatic. Some of the words you said with the Poche incidents, like you, you're looking at all sides yeah. and yeah. what his frame of mind is at the time. Yeah. You give yeah. him a little leeway for that, of course. And yeah. uh, But you brought an excellent energy on the set today. Before we let you go, we always like to ask the guest, uh, you know, just give the viewers, whether it's fishing advice uh, or, or whether it pertains to fishing, business, life in general, but just some life advice for, uh, for the viewers and listeners here. But d- what's your number one piece of advice? Oh, definitely. My number one is just to work hard and be a good person. I think if you work hard and you're an honest and good person, you're going to be successful no matter what yeah. you do. I just mean, that's naturally. just, yeah. yeah, don't sell yourself out. Mm-hmm. You know, don't, don't, don't be a bad person mm-hmm. um, and be, you know, passionate and have a good work ethic. I, mean, I know all that probably seems a bit cliche, but I think it's, it's really. It's true. Think it, about it. it. Listen it really, to that. Listen yeah. to those words. Yeah. yeah, it really is true because, uh, you can do anything. I mean, I'm, I'm proof of it. Uh, I, I, I wasn't a great student, but I, I found my way through college. I, I, I got a degree in fisheries and wildlife management because I was passionate about mm-hmm. fisheries and, and wildlife. And uh, I ended up working for a long time at Cary Corporation, purchasing um, parts for machines and dabbling in Randall. bass fit. Yeah, and, and, and dabbling bass fishing and spending my weekends as a tournament director for a, a pretty large club in central New York and uh, Bass came to Oneida Lake for the first time ever. I was a volunteer coordinator. About a year later, a job opened wow. up. I had a fisheries and wildlife That's degree. Awesome. And uh, Chuck Harbin, who you all know, uh, who retired from Bass a few years ago, he, he thought highly of me from a, the experience at Oneida wow. Lake and what I did organizing with volunteers. I sent in my resume. Next thing you know, I'm flying to Montgomery, Alabama, wow. interviewing with uh, Trip Weldon. And, How uh, about here that? We are, here we are. There's so, a test. So that to and, and that was you know doing that volunteer and that's a, that's the other thing volunteer because you never know when a volunteer role like I took there who you meet who you can connect with what doors mm-hmm. who open. you can meet and then you know without if I don't do that this never this happens. probably never happens probably never happens we won't say for sure but pretty good chance it never right. Happens. That's well, cool. And I'm still buying maintenance parts. Yeah. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> oh, That's well, there you have it. Well, it's uh, it's one o'clock, and you got to get to the weigh-in yeah. site there. I really appreciate it, Chris. No, you awesome, are awesome. Man. Great was energy. Great. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Yeah. And uh, hey, we'll we'll go round two here uh, in a few months. How about that? Yeah, sure. Anytime you want to catch up, I'm I'm more than will, willing to come on. And uh, you guys are are great for the sport, great for bass, and, and Thanks, anything Chris. we can do to help you out, I'm all on. Awesome. I appreciate Chris. it. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. We're out.